Um, and so, you know, I've been fighting that, and I'm beyond that now. But, um, you know, the reason I moved to Austin, Texas, was to be freer. I was living here in New York City, and I felt that I was not free here. I need to get out. And so I fled to, I fled to Austin, which I felt was the liberty destination of the universe. Um, but uh, great things are happening in Asheville and New York as well. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I moved there to be around other liberty-minded people. And thank God I moved there because once I got arrested, they just rallied up and they came to my defense and they really helped me hold the police accountable. Um, early on, all I wanted to do was be free myself. I, I just wanted to get out from under the uh, boot of the Austin Police Department and the state there. Um, but as time went on and as more people joined on to support me, I saw that as an opportunity to expand liberty or freedom. And I know that a lot of people have different definitions of liberty, freedom, anarchy, and there's a big mess that's going on right now with uh, some anarchists saying that other anarchists aren't true anarchists, and John Bush is going to talk next, and he's going to say some good stuff about that whole battle. But I just believe that we should always be striving towards a freer existence for ourselves and others, and we should be fighting oppression. And the oppression doesn't have to be the state, right? Uh, oppression could be just really crappy neighbors who are stealing stuff from you, or who are, who are hurting their kids, um, or, you know, people who are holding guns to you and asking you for your money. Like, they, look, those are all forms of oppression. Corporations can oppress. And so we need to acknowledge that anarchy or just a desire to live in a freer society, a more tolerant, uh, loving society, doesn't have to be just about being anti-state. We need to address other forms of oppression as well. And I think that's where a lot of this, um, the friction comes in with this whole, well, I'm this type of anarchist, you're that type of anarchist. But, um, you know, as I was trying to push liberty and freedom, especially through homeschooling, trying to help parents uh, free their kids from the indoctrination centers that are called public schools, uh, trying to give their kids a situation where they can go ahead and learn um, to question things and to look for the truth behind issues and to not just automatically bow down to and worship authority figures. You know, as I was doing that, this whole thing in uh, Austin happened to me. And so we decided to launch the Peaceful Streets Project as a way to fight back. And at the beginning, I tried to play nice with the police because I said, well, a lot of these guys are oath keepers, and oath keepers are good, right? And, uh, and, and once, once the crap hits the fan, they're going to come out and protect us. They're going to stand up for us. They, they won't take our guns, for example. Um, and I thought that they were going to join forces with us. You know, it was pretty obvious. We had a video of a cop assaulting a woman and then coming after me and then saying that I spit in their face. So surely the good cops are going to step up and do something, right? But the fact is, cops are cowards, right? Yeah. Cops are cowards, they don't have any uh, courage, honor, or integrity, and they sit by and allow other cops to commit crime. It's called the thin blue line. And I swear to God, I try so hard to keep peppering into my interviews, media interviews, not all cops are bad. You know, we just want the good cops to stand up. And after a year and a half, not a single good cop has stood up. You know, and, and it's pretty clear that that, there's, that the idea that there's a good cop out there is a fantasy. It's fiction. And so cops challenge us. And they said, that's not true. There's good cops all the time. Here's a, here's a link to a guy who bought someone a pair of shoes. That's a good cop. <laughs> like, well, you know, I've done charity before. I don't get rewarded as a good homeschooling guy because I've done that, right? Um, but I do have the Kelly Thomas video where they beat to death a homeless guy on video. And there was about 12 cops that joined in or covered it up right then and there. Where was the good cop in that situation? There wasn't one. I asked the police to come out with one story, one story within the past 20 years, of a cop who sees another cop committing a felony crime and then turns the pistol on that cop and says, you're under arrest. No one has been able to do it. Not one example. But we have seen hundreds of videos of cops committing felony crimes against people, and they sit back and do nothing, or they join in. But not one cop, one example of a cop. I know that that makes people upset. Fast forward to after I got out of jail, 
my first full day of freedom again on Monday, and the Boston bombing happens. Right? And everyone starts tweeting about how terrible it is, and it was terrible, no question about it. But then people start tweeting about what a great job the Boston police are doing. Well, I looked at the video, and I phoned in on the police, and the thing that I noticed was explosion, right? A lot of confusion, and the police start running away from the explosions while regular, clothed, folk people are rushing in. EMT are rushing in. Even some National Guard soldiers rush in, and the cops are running away. One cop did not run away. One cop ran towards the scene. Okay? These are the so-called heroes that are out to protect and serve us. They take our money against our will. They do some crap like uh, stop and frisk here in New York. They kill people all the time. And then they go around telling us that we have to respect them and that we have to uh, honor them and that they're heroes. And it, it's a bunch of BS. They're a bunch of criminals. Okay? And so, so then fast forward to what happened over the last couple of days, right? And concluding with last night. They have 9,000 cops engaged in a search for one person, right? And Grant probably a bad guy if he did it, right? He's probably a bad guy. And you certainly want to get this guy. But they put the city under martial law. They, they lock people in their homes. They tell them that they couldn't come out. Um, they were going door to door, doing searches of these houses, you know, breaking into people's houses with guns. Yeah, sure, they were knocking and asking if they could come in, but you know, who's going to say no to a bunch of armed thugs at your door? And, uh, and then when they finally kill this, or they almost killed this guy, and they finally get him, they start celebrating. And as Campbell said, it was disgusting because people are out in the streets celebrating and cheering the fact that they caught this one person, 9,000 cops for one person. And it, it, it's really disturbing because if you believe that we should live in a masterless society where there should be no masters, then what, what is the point of having this police state? Um, but there's good news to this as well. There's good news because the fact that it took 9,000 cops to chase after one person should be quite telling, right? We don't need to have all of society join us and believe that um, that we should live without the state. We don't need to have 9,000 or uh, and you know even a majority of the population to agree that we don't need police, right? All we need is a couple of people. If there's a thousand people who refuse to uh, obey, and they need not by the nine thousand people per every person, that's nine million cops. They're not going to get nine million cops. The system will collapse on itself, you know, if people stand up and resist. The problem is, is how do you get people to stand up and resist, right? Because you know that the consequences are quite dire. And the answer to that is we have to identify. We have to. Uh, come together and find alternative institutions and we have to find solutions for the problems that we face. And one of the problems that we face is crime, right? People who are bad people, people who would hurt people.